morning. Told you guys yesterday we we're getting a piece of equipment that we would not need duels on the tractor for. There it is. This is an Umberford Nutramax. Yep, there it is. Yep, watch the unit. It's like strip tilling 2.0. So this is a side dress bar. Basically with this bar, we will straddle these cornrows and inject our fertilizer. So by injecting the fertilizer, this is the same concept we do with the sprayer, except with the sprayer we put on top of the ground. Uh, Underford was nice enough to let us try this bar. This is a demo unit. So we are going to try it. 2600 gallon capacity, 60 foot boom. Uh, should be able to cover some dirt. The sprayer is going to be quicker, no doubt about it. Uh, the sprayer is a 120 foot boom and you can run faster. But putting that 28 in the dirt should have some benefits. Uh, should make it a little bit more stable. Curious to try it. Something we've kind of wanted to try. Had the opportunity to try it, so we're going to try it. Now these guys, they are taking the Raptor when they leave, so we gotta get it loaded up. That's a good time. Raptor's very difficult to load. So we did have to unhook the accelerator just for a brief moment of time. BJ does still have about uh, I think he said 50 acres, maybe a little bit more, of accelerating to do. There goes someone living Dad's glory days, 40, 20, and a six row. Open station. Yeah, he's in for a hot day today. Jay's going to get the, the Bob Brown special on the backing up directions. Good stuff. Anybody else ever get help while you're backing up? Help. Now you definitely need it with this. The strip to bar, he cannot see that trailer behind him at all. So you definitely need someone spotting for you. It's going the wrong way. This is a dual machine loading operation. Basically, they got to pick this tongue up on this Raptor, which is very heavy. A lot of tongue weight on a Raptor. They got to get it on the neck of that detach over there. A little bit cumbersome, but we've luckily got the equipment to do it. Driver's got a nice, nice setup. I tried to trade him for a wreck Columbia, and he laughed. Okay, so this is a couple days after we unloaded this thing. As you can see, we got it hooked up. It is, uh, well, it's ready to do some testing. But anyways, here at Jake Mason from Underforth. Jake came down. He's going to show us how to use this thing. But I figured we ought to do a little bit of a walk around on it, kind of explain what a side dresser is, how it works, and what it does. So, so Jake, tell us what it does. Yeah, uh, so this is our Nutramax side dress applicator product line. I guess side dress, so the main purpose of this machine is we are going to be putting down nitrogen. It's one of the three main uh, inputs into growing, uh, in particular corn. And so uh, there's different forms of nitrogen. Um, there's like anhydrous, and then there's like a liquid 28, liquid 32, and then there's also a granular urea. So depending on the operation, the farmer's preferences, costs, each farmer does things differently. So this product, or this uh, Nutramax is used to put down liquid 28 or liquid 32% nitrogen. That number just means it's 
the actual content of the liquid is 28% of actual nitrogen. The rest is just a mix. So that's like the usable side of it. But that's kind of the point of these, these toolbars is liquid 28. And uh, that's what, you know, Brian's chose to put down on his corn this year. So it gives a range, um, you know, it's just a kind of like a sprayer and a piece of application equipment. You know, we have a rate controller and a, a pump. We're just pumping liquid out. We're metering it through the rate controller coming to the individual rows. And then uh, we, this one's equipped with nozzles. Uh, they'll basically inject a, or shoot a stream of liquid down behind these coulters after it opens up a slight trench that gets down in the ground so then the corn roots can go get it. Um, a couple different options we have too are um, knives, um, which will basically have like a knife and there'll be a, a tube on the back side of it will actually shoot the liquid down into the trench. So um, kind of just depends. Knives draft a little bit more, stuff like that kind of user preferences. So okay. that's kind of the base of a Nutramax. So like this Nutramax has got a 2600 gallon tank. What kind of configs does that come in? I mean, are there different Yeah, sizes, so in our Nutramax line, we have three different model numbers which correlate to tank sizes. So we have a Nutramax 1400, which would be a 1400 gallon tank. And then we have a 1800, 1800 gallon tank. And then the one you see here is a 2600 model, which holds 2600 gallons of uh, 28. And then I'm guessing you got different uh, different width machines and different, uh, yeah, different track options. Absolutely, yep. So I guess talking the toolbar um, so our 1400 has a 40 foot toolbar that can fold down to 30 foot if we wanted to uh, do like dual width depending on uh, planners you know if we're trying to match different widths of planners you know if it's a depending on what you're using it for um, and that toolbar is also offered on the 1800 and then in the 1800 pro uh, model we also have then the option to go to our 60 foot and slash 90 foot toolbar where we can, um, this is actually what you'll see here, it's a different design, um, and that 90 foot's just added with an extension on the end of the. Of okay, the, so on the 90, the there's just the, 15 feet more. more yeah, but it's just a. Same, yeah, just, same frame yeah, and everything. Just a bolt on extension. You know, the toolbar is, uh, itself is the same. So, and those, um, we have different uh, uh, Coulter spacings. So if guys running 20 inch corn, uh, 22 inch corn, 30 inch corn, you know, whatever they're planning at, we have Coulters to match, and we'll have coordinating toolbars to match that same length. In all of our toolbar sizes too, we do have a optional add-on coulter package, which the add-on coulter, you know, with, with us going in between the corn rows, um, when it comes to following the tracks of the planter, we actually have to go, you know, say for example, um, we have a 24 row corn, corn planter. Uh, we would have to run either 23 rows or 25 rows because we aren't going to be planting right where the corn is. So we have the add-on coulter package. It adds a coulter on each side. Um, the benefit of that is, is you know, to put down a, a, a um, the same rate across the width of the toolbar. Um, if we do 23 rows, we basically will have to skip a row to keep in the tracks of the corn planter. And what that does is, you know, in that in that missing row, we basically put a, a rate and a half of product on each side of that guest row or that that's that skip row and uh, you know sometimes that might not lead to the best nitrogen mixing in that row so the other al alternative option is the add-on coulter package it makes it a 25 row so we're actually going to double up that outside coulter so it comes you know comes towards you and when we go back the other way that last coulter is going to be in the same pass and we're putting down a half rate of okay of so the liquid. outside was only getting half yeah yep so that way when you go the two basses combined you're at a full rate that gives you the most even full rate across with, the with this controller rate. does it have the ability to uh, variable rate each individual row then uh, no, that's uh, it's just a the variable rate is across the toolbar. We do have sections. Um, uh, this one is equipped as a five-section toolbar. Okay. Um, so you know it will be able to shut off the sections as you come into headlands, come into you know point row stuff like that. Um, but the rate is consistent across the toolbar. Okay. So you're doing that half rate just with just a uh, yeah, it's with an orifice. Okay. Yep. So we'll have an orifice out on those extra rows, um, and what that'll do is you know the pump's just putting out pressure. And um, by having a different size orifice, it's going to basically you know, pass where all the pressure yep. equalized. We're going to have half the product coming out of that outside row. So it's kind of just pretty simple orifice there. Gotcha. So. What's the uh, ground speed that most guys are trying to run with one of these rigs? Um, I've seen anywhere, I'd say probably six to eight mile an hour is a pretty common uh, speed. Uh, kind of just depends on how comfortable you are running down through uh, standing corn. Um, obviously, if you go faster, there's more margin for error. But um, yeah, six to eight is pretty common speed. Um, and we can go lots of different ranges of uh, rates as well. If we do, you know, if we can go from as low as, um, you know, 
below 20, 10 gallon, if we want to go up to you know 50 gallon, we have that range. Um, the important thing to know about that is if we are going to be changing rates, there is a uh, we have to change orifices as well. So um, you know all of our Nutramax dealers, they're uh, educated in that realm. They can help pick the new, the orifices out for you uh, that best suit your ground speed and, and what kind of rate you're putting down. So um, there is some range of variability we can do in the, within each individual orifice size, um, but then we get into some you know the pressure changes as we slow down speed up and um, we can get into some if you know if the pressure gets too high we can have some erratic output or if the pressure gets too low um, there's actually 10 pound check valves at each row that engage when you pick the toolbar up those checks will prevent dribbling of nitrogen oh, okay. so if we say we have an orifice that's set too big and we're going slow um, we're not building a lot of pressure to hit the rates that we're trying to go at um, we'll actually get below 10 pounds and the whole toolbar will shut off and be wondering what the heck's going on so right, right. orifices are very important as far as when you're trying to set your rate and stuff like that that you're going to be going at so. okay no all right well i feel educated try my best yeah, let's, <laughs> let's go run over some corn yeah so we're going to run a little bit of water into this thing basically just to do a check make sure we're actually flowing product we don't want to do that with fertilizer and waste fertilizer because fertilizer is expensive and well water for water is plentiful at the moment Put a little bit of water in here make sure we're applying we have some blockage, a blockage system that's going on this from Ag Express. Waiting on them guys to get here. Once we get that set up, we're going to make a few passes in this field. It's plenty wet, but I think it's dry enough to we'll be able to get through it. We do have a rain coming soon, though. I'd really like to try that thing out while they're here. We've got a lot of eyes and ears and, you know, just people to help. But, uh, yeah, we'll definitely be able to drive on this. For sure. So we are going to fold this thing up. We have a 28 take just down the driveway. We're going to go put a little bit in it. I don't think we're going to fill it up just yet. Uh, we'll probably put a thousand gallons in or so and uh, see what this thing will do. So we do have some rain moving in, but right now I feel like this field's dry enough we can do it. So we're going to do it. 28 pretty time sensitive because once that corn gets so tall, well, this tractor ain't going to go through it without, you know, killing some corn. So we got we to gotta fertilize while we can. All right, we are not full, but we have a thousand gallons in here. I'm gonna run this through, make sure everything's working. And if the weather's holding out, we'll go ahead and fill her up and go run it out. So if this thing's full at the rate we're putting on, that's roughly 86 acres. It's gonna take some getting used to what we're about to do. This feels wrong on so many levels, but here we go. We are in standing corn. Don't like it. Don't like it at all. Feels so wrong, so wrong. I'm gonna put this camera down. I'm gonna learn some stuff because there's, you know, I'm not 100% sure on how to use this, and I will get back to you guys when I feel more confident running this thing. So right now we are still getting uh, bar set, all of our depths correct, getting the depths of our uh, colders. They're out there adjusting those gauge wheels as you're keeping the bar out of the ground. Like flip that down just a little bit. But uh, yeah, so far everything's working. We're ready to roll. We're doing it. We're doing it. We are fertilizing, applying. Well, unfortunately, it is raining. It's been a roller coaster of a rain day. No chance of rain, chance of rain, no chance of rain, chance of rain. Well, it's raining. But we did get this field done kind of starting to get the hang of it uh, just it's just when there was so much corn it's uh, so different than what I'm used to everyone I've talked to inside us says you get used to it but uh, man it seems like we're running over a lot of corn now they did recommend us leaving our rear duels on this tractor we were going to space it out to not have those but they did recommend that we leave them on there so that's why we're still running our duels and man, it just seems like we're running over a lot of corn one cool thing that this underfirth bar has it's a factory option so I Express makes them a flow meter and a blockage system that is uh, it's pretty cool. It's a little bit different than just the old flow balls. It's kind of like a blockage system you'd see on a on our air seeder. Seems to be pretty cool. Seems to work pretty well. It definitely told me when we were no longer applying because we were empty. So Mother Nature is apparently intoxicated and it is no longer raining. We are back in the field. We are full scent. Dad's across the road spraying the field that we just... Uh, just ran this through. He had some water in there. He's testing some stuff, so he's probably just running out that water. Maybe I don't know if he'd have any herbicide in there or not. 
He's over there playing in the oxbow. And we're well, we're side dressing. Unfortunately, there's no cool jokes like when we're stripping, but we're side dressing. So with this blockage monitor, basically we want the the row to look like. See how number six? There's nothing there. That's perfect. We are putting a perfect rate. These will all start turning green as we go along. Everything's primed. All the air is running out of everything. And uh, basically, when we're in the green, but, but there's a little bit of a graph like that, we are within tolerance. Uh, there's nothing to be alarmed about. If these red ones don't go away, I'm going to start to get a little concerned, but I think they're all right. Yep, there they go. And rows 25 and row 1 are applying a half rate. Those are our half rows. What I mean by that, whenever we spin back around, we will be applying on row number one again. So we're putting on a half rate. Still getting a steady sprinkle. We're still going. We're running seven and a half mile an hour, 60 foot wide. We are covering, covering some acres. Getting some stuff done. But I'm afraid we're about to be rained down. I was hoping to finish this field. Looks like we're going to be about half done with this field. All right, we finished that field, so that's probably going to be it for today. We got some rain rolling in. I might fill this thing up, get it fueled up, and be ready to go for tomorrow if we don't get any rain. But I guess if we do all that and it's not raining, we'll, we'll keep going. But uh, yeah, just knocked out a quick hundred acres. Um, it goes quick. It's just it's taking a lot to get used to running over that corn. I'm not not used to that at all, at all. But we'll see how it does.